Impressions, Haynes, her solutions are our sponsors. And I am happy to have here Jason Murphy, who, uh, I don't know, he can tell you his title. And he works for Sam Marr. <laughs> He's pretty important, and he knows a lot about transfers. And that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, so again, I'm Jason Murphy I'm with Sanmar. I'm a senior strategic account manager. Can't hear? Yeah, pull it up closer, dear. Is that better? Excellent. You know what? I think this is better. Is that better? All yeah. right. So I'm a, a strategic account manager with Sanmar. My job with Sanmar is actually test all of our fabrics, uh, come up with new fabrics, and work with all the amazing people in this building to understand what problems that they're solving. What so, a concept. You make. You actually care that we could decorate your garments. That's a wonderful thing. It, it is a big thing. Yeah, so it, it, so we have heat transfer people, okay, screen printers, embroiderers. All right, so we all have the same issues, so we're, we're here to help. Uh, but, yeah, the team that I'm on, it's called the Decorator and Digital Solutions Group, and there's a team of seven of us, including my boss back there, Mark, and uh, we help decorators that are Sanmar customers, basically free consultants. So that's what we do, we try to help out. And today we're going to talk a lot about heat transfers and kind of where I wanted to start, if it's okay with you. Go for it. So a lot of folks, and this is from recent visits I've had, when you go to start looking at a transfer, what do you know about your apparel piece first, your fabric? Does anybody think about that piece or do they go right away and like, I need to go to a transfer, right? So I had these recent problems and it really made me think about this. I'm like, okay, I got to talk about this next time I'm with Rick. When you're doing a transfer job, the very most important thing that you need to understand first is the fabric that you're working with. What is this composition? Is it 100% poly? Is it a tri-blend? Is it cotton? Because not all transfers work on every fabric, right? So you always want to start with your fabric first, understand what it is. And then from there, go to your manufacturer and work with your manufacturer to understand which transfer that they have works the best for the fabric that you're putting it on. So that is a very important thing to remember. So always start fabric first, know what it's about. So let's, let's talk polyester. What is the maximum threshold you should go on for a standard transfer of polyester? Anybody? You, you don't count. <laughs> <laughs> That's 320 insulting, degrees. Insulting the audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we know each other too long. Um, and he used to work for Stalls too, so we already knew that, that question. Um, so 320 degrees, a lot of people don't realize that because they think dice up. Well, I could go on at 400 degrees. Let's go ahead and do this. Well, when you're putting a transfer on and you're putting it on a small area and you're just doing a part of the shirt, you could scorch or change the sheen of just that area if you're too hot. So it's always understanding your max thermal threshold before you get started. Those are things that we help you with. If you go to sandmar.com and a lot of the manufacturers here do the same thing, they have little things to be mindful of. Thermal thresholds, not to exceed talk to your manufacturers. Again, talk to your manufacturers. They are there and they're really good. They are the experts at the product that they sell. So uh, how, does anybody know if you went to Stalls or you went to Caesar or you went to Supacolor, you went to any number of these transfer manufacturers and said, okay, I'm having failure here. It, it's scorching the shirt or it's doing this. Or I'm having dye migration. Almost every one of them have an alternate application setting. So you may go from 320 degrees for eight seconds to 290 degrees for 12 seconds, and who knew you could do that, right? So always question them, always talk to them and find out what can we do to make this work. Time, heat, and pressure. Time, temperature, pressure, it is the most important thing. So that being said, if you want a good successful transfer, follow the manufacturer's recommendations to start, okay? Because time, temperature, pressure, you need all three to make a successful transfer. Stays on, doesn't wash off, color fast, the whole deal. It's when you exceed those, okay? So I was just at a shop, I'm not gonna name names. Um, they were putting everything on at 120 PSI, 350 degrees for 10 seconds. 120 PSI. Most transfers don't need over 30, okay? That was excessive. Not only did they ruin every transfer they were putting on, they broke their machines. I watched them fall apart while I was there. <laughs> it was kind of entertaining, um, but we got them fixed. So, that was so a you good don't thing. put maximum pressure, maximum temperature to make it work? Really? Not at all. So let's talk about adhesives on transfers, right? So most adhesives in a transfer go on at 300-ish degrees nowadays for 10 to 12 seconds. That doesn't mean that that adhesive needs to get to 300 degrees. That combination is the fastest recipe that the manufacturers put together to make it reach somewhere around 260 to liquefy that adhesive and let it go down into the fabric. And the pressure and the heat and the time together makes that actually work. 
So there's always alternates of ways to work around that. And they will all have an alternate application for you. You just got to ask. All right. So what's, what's new in the world of transfers? So before we go to new, because we have some screen printers in here, we've got some embroiderers in here, let's talk about where transfers make a lot of sense. Okay. So with our screen printers here, who likes to heat tra or who likes to do screen printing on technical bags, hats, uh, totes, things like that? Anybody enjoy that, right? It's terrible. It's one of the worst things to do. A heat transfer machine is probably the single most piece that you'll put in your shop that'll make you the money the fastest because it fixes the problem of doing headwear. It fixes the problem of doing bags, luggage, totes, all the really hard to do accessories. Heat transfers make the most sense. So small runs, right? Again, our screen printers, we're not going to set up for 12 pieces. And if we are, it's going to be really expensive. So that's where you can go to a, a transfer company and actually order it pre-done. And if you have somebody that uses them a lot, but only needs a few there and a few there, get them to commit your customer. Look, I can get them for this price if you commit to 250 transfers and I'll stock them, pick, transfer, and send to you as you need them. So transfers are a super, super good thing to have in every shop. Uh, yes. What's the shelf life of a okay. transfer? So most, so CAD cut, which is your heat transfer vinyl, I personally haven't found a shelf life with yet. I had some really old stuff in my shop. I'm talking like 10 plus years old. It still worked. It was incredible. Now, that being said, plastisol transfers have a shelf life, okay? Generally going to be somewhere around a year. To extend that shelf life, you take them out of their packaging, put them in a Ziploc bag, and file them away, okay? That will keep them longer. Now, the other cool trick with this is if you have a plastisol transfer you apply and it's not working, set it under your heat press, ink up, eh, minute or so and let it just heat up and it'll actually usually fix the problem of not working anymore so that's just a little trick if you had an old transfer but i do say somewhere around a year for plastisol so the uh, do the presses with the heat underneath also help then for that definitely so <laughs> greatest thing that has been invented in the heat transfer world in the last year and a half two years is a heat heat press that has under heat okay so now let's talk again about that sensitive fabric polyesters, tri-blends, anything with rayon, anything lyocell, right? They're hard to work with. If you're printing with the heat from the bottom up and you scorch the inside of the shirt, who cares? They're not going to see that. They're not going to feel it. But if you scorch the top of the shirt, you are going to see that, right? Because it leaves the infamous heat press ring. So if you're investing and looking to change, buy a machine that has lower heat because it helps with a lot of different things. One, the scorching and sheen change. Two is your thick dimensional transfers. So the faux leather, the molded metallics, things that are really popular today, it's easier to get heat from the bottom to the adhesive than it is from the top down. I think the other thing that to back up is the quality of transfers right now. So that makes them a good solution for these. Huge, things, so right? transfers. I mean, I, you know, it's funny when we were gonna do this talk I always say, hey, it's not those old Care Bears things you saw where they were all like peeling off and, uh, you know, wash off. And you would see them at flea markets and in, uh, you know, Sally Army and all that. So I was like, you know, I could probably buy one of those shirts for like five bucks and have an example. No, now they cost like 50 bucks because they're like a vintage thing. Yep. <laughs> anyway, but. Yep. But a a anyway, the transfers oh. are not our, our grandfather's or, no, or no. my transfers. Anybody go back to the mall days when you had your pictures pixelated, you know, kids pixelated picture put on? That's kind of what I remember of heat transfer. Iron on. Iron on. It is so much more technical today. You know, it, it's like, so a lot of people are talking about direct to film now, right? Making your own transfers. And that's a really interesting concept. And there's some good, a couple good machines out there. And, and But the problem is they touted its exact same technology. It's not. Okay, it's cool, it's neat, and it's gonna last, and I think it's gonna be very viable over the next five years as it continues to grow. But how companies manufacture a full color digital transfer is not a DTF. It is an enormous amount of equipment, very expensive equipment. I mean, to get started in a production facility, a couple million dollars worth of equipment. Okay, a $50,000 DTF is not gonna be exactly the same. 
you know, again, that being said, over the next five years, it's going to be very viable. And it's, it's looking really neat. But the screen printed transfers are really basically an indirect print, right? 100%. I even call them those for people I think are going to resist the idea of a transfer. We're going to use an indirect print. Yes. <laughs> so the whole heat transfer moniker, when you, when you look at, you know, back in the day when I started heat transfer, it's like, oh, heat transfer, I don't want that. It's thick. It's this. It's terrible. It cracks. Today's technology, it's phenomenal. It's soft, it stretches, it's full color, uh, it's dimensional, right? So the big thing now in transfer, and I'll show you some samples as we get going, texture, dimension, stretch, um, you know, just the whole tactile. That's what they want. Flock, Flock came back. You remember old 70s uh, soccer numbers and letters? That is back in spades. They, people love it. Now, screen printers, who's screen printed Flock? <laughs> it gets everywhere. It's all over your shop. It's the worst thing you could ever want to do. Um, but having a CAD cut We flock, don't do it anymore. No. it's. No. I walked into a shop once. It was red. The entire shop was red. Every piece of machinery, every wall, the floors. And this is the first time I ever saw it. And I'm like, what happened to your shop? And they're like, oh, we did a flock job yesterday. I'm like, what do you do now? And he, well, we shut down for eight hours and cleaned the shop. I'm like, that's not worth it. If you've never seen flock done, basically you print an adhesive and then you print or somehow get nylon fibers on top of the adhesive and then there's an electrostatic charge that pulls it up straight so it's nice and fluffy. Yeah. But it, does it all stay in the adhesive? No. It's in your lungs and your shop and it's awful. Yeah, it gets everywhere. You know, so before we get into the samples, probably just one of the one things I really encourage everybody who's getting into heat transfer is is to do it. Do your research, get samples from all the manufacturers. There's, I mean, if you look around this building, you've got stalls, you've got Caesar, you've got specialty materials. Um, GSG carries up tons of material. Um, you've got Supacolor, a new company that's come out that makes phenomenal full color transfers. Don't be shy. I mean, call around, ask for sample kits, because when you get your sample kits, now you get to test it, okay? Does anybody keep a playbook by chance of how they apply things? All right, so the playbook, I know screen printers do this. When you test a new fabric, right? You get a new shirt from Sanmar and we're like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with this thing? It's sensitive or it works great, I don't know. Keep a playbook. I had success with this transfer at this time, this temperature, this pressure and keep those things written down. That's one of the most important things you can do is understand what you're working with. It will make you more efficient moving forward, ruining less garments because oh, I forgot how I did that last time. Write it down. It the helps a lot. The great thing about a playbook for transfers is that the information stays relevant forever. Whereas screen printing, maybe you printed at 50 degrees on a humid day and your dryer worked but then it's you know a dry day and 100 degrees, and the tr the, it's a really a 50 degree difference and uh, humidity change, and the dryer won't work one time and it will work another. I, I do a lot of uh, consulting for mill. People say, well, I printed this the same way, and this time it washed off. <laughs> well, when did you do it? What was the weather, et, et cetera. Transfers, on the other hand, that holy trinity, the uh, time, temperature, and pressure, is very repeatable. The better transfer machine you have, the more you can even do it. So that if it's an air pressure, you'll, you'll know better than how far you locked it down, what have you. But yeah. even low, medium, high pressure, temperature, time, you write it down one time it'll work as long as they made the transfer the right way. Yeah. And there's really a lot of reputable transfer companies now. Yeah, um, there, there truly is. I think the is. ones besides you mentioned, uh, Howard we use also. Howard's great. FM Expressions. Yep. Uh, like Howard, and FM, they all have Apex. Specialties. Oh, know, for sure. You know what I mean? Some are like high volume and you make sheets. It's a, it's a better company. Uh, others, full color, super color, for example. Speed of how fast you can get them. Uh, you know, cost, it's not that big of a deal on transfers, honestly. No, not the, really. The time spent putting them on is, is more uh, and how fast you can get them kind of thing. So, for sure. Anyway. So let's talk some trends, what we're seeing in the industry. So. What we look at with trends for heat transfer is really looking into the fashion market into retail, right? There's a lot of times you go to retail and you're looking at something and you don't know what it is. I guarantee you, if you're wondering and you don't think it's a screen print, it's a transfer. And transfers are super, super popular in the entire fashion realm right now because you can get stuff like this, glitter, okay? This is not going away. 
Okay, we're in Texas. Do you all still like rhinestones? Maybe some of us, I know some of us don't. But oh, rhinestones. A friend of mine said, people in crows like shiny things. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to pass them away, around, make sure he gets them back. <laughs> So glitter is one that's super popular still, um, and it's anywhere from cheer to uh, companies, sororities, uh, you, you name it, you can do this. Oh, fan wear. Soccer moms, football moms, baseball moms, rhinestones and glitter. Oh, my gosh, they're everywhere. I, I, I'm actually happy my kids are grown and I don't have to see it anymore. <laughs> I miss the games, but not the apparel. What I've seen new, this one's kind of cool. It's hard to tell unless somebody's got a flashlight. This is a reflective glitter. I, I've never seen this before. Stalls came out with this, and he showed it to me, and I'm like, wait, what? Reflective glitter? Okay, that's kind of cool because reflectivity is another huge trend that we're going through right now. If you haven't looked at reflective things, you usually have to shine a light straight at it and straight back to your uh, eyes. It, it, from an angle, you can't see it. Now, the other cool thing with reflective is if you go back when reflective started, let's go back to our screen printers here, and, I, and I'm going to point at a couple. Who likes to screen print reflective? It's, you're okay with it? because we did hundreds of thousands. It is the <laughs> most difficult thing to do. It's glass beads. That's how you actually get reflective, and you have to use a really loose screen. You have to have a you know, low mesh, cause you, and you're not going to get a ton of detail. And actually, in a safety application, only a transfer will work. There's yep. a, a thing called ANSI standards, ANSI, for uh, safety purposes. You can never print to ANSI standards. You no. can only do transfers. Yep. So that's important to know. Yeah, if you do that. Um, so These are fashion ones. Yeah, but, 3M but is your only, your only option. It's the um, 3107, and there was one more, 2807. But they're great products. They're easy to apply, and they are ANSI certified. Now, don't. Don't make that, that assumption that because I put ANSI certified material on it, that that garment is now ANSI certified. Because to be ANSI certified, it has to have so much reflectivity per square inch of the garment to reach a certain ANSI certification. So don't make that claim. Buy something that is already ANSI certified and then add more reflectivity to it. You can't go wrong with that. Hmm. So That was worth the price of admission already, knowing that. <laughs> That's a good one. So you can tell also, so back in the day, it was only silver. So now we've got all these different colors of reflective, and this is something you're seeing in the fashion and the sports market, is they want to have that cool pop, that flair. So again, I was at a football game, a high school football game, and I saw on the other side, they, and the lights hit it, there was a whole group of people that had a reflective wear on, and it had their kid's name. It was freaking cool. They stood up, and it was like beaming across the field, and I'm like, oh, wow. Now I'm thinking, what if, they, what if one of these teams sold shirts and it had reflectivity all over this thing? What would it do to the other team's morale? When they all stand up and the whole stands are reflecting, I'll be like, that would be amazing. I need to make that happen somewhere. Now, staying on the glitter, this one here is a sublimatable, right? If you do sublimation, there's a lot of different sublimation um, options with heat transfer. So this one here is a glitter that was transferred, gives it a really cool look. And, you know, sublimation, I'd say the big thing with dye sub is you're limited to polyester or high poly content, and it, you've got to be able to withstand the heat. But there's options now where you can actually sublimate onto heat transfer vinyl and give them that, so that cool multicolored look. Or you can just go buy a hybrid transfer that has it all. All right. Sticking with shiny. Foils. So foil is still really, really popular. And again, a screen printers, a foil is like kind of like, ah, if I have to, we, we'll do it. But it's really popular. Now, what I like about this sample, and I want everybody to look at this, this is a multimedia. This uses a flat and shiny. It gives it dimension. It, it just, be creative. If you've got somebody willing to pay, heat transfer, you can be so creative and do small runs with it that this is a really good option. More foils, again, lots of different looks. I want to say the last time I saw a foil um, book, there were 500 different patterns available. So is, is that printed adhesive or the whole thing is a That's all foil. <laughs> yep, and it's all heat transfer and you can just cut it. All right, so sticking with the new trend now, heat transfer vinyl. How many cutter people do we have here? Anybody got vinyl cutters? Okay, another one that that is for a $3,000 investment, that will pay you back faster than anything you're buying in your shop because you can do so much personalization with, it, with a vinyl cutter that it, it's tremendous. What's cool about this one 
Here, stretch that for me. So this here is a silicone product, and that one's from Stalls. It's a really cool product, a little bit thick. But it's it, so it's fun to print silicone. Yeah, oh, that's another good one. So two companies that are hot in silicone right now, they have a heat transfer version that's CAD cuttable. Insta makes an actual uh, pre-done silicone transfer called um, Silic Stream, I think it was, or Extreme X, and that is amazing. I put it on some super stretchy material, and I sat there trying to break it. It wouldn't break. Every time I stretched it, it popped right back. So that, that was a really neat one from Insta. So sticking with transfer vinyl again, everybody like doing leggings? Okay, with a heat transfer machine, this is solid. This is easy to do. The big thing to remember is, is it gonna block the dye migration? Okay, yes, this is mine. This is a Sanmar product, and yes, it does dye migrate. This one I, is difficult. It doesn't look like you'll fit those, really. No, they are, they're mine. <laughs> I'm wearing these later to the stockyards. Um, but, so your super bright colors, right? Sauce everybody, like it's good. It's gonna be like that. So everybody loves the big bright material right now. Everybody loves the 80s colors, the neons. And you can get that look with screen printing, but if you just want bright and easy to apply, heat transfer is the way to go. Cut it, order it, be done with it. What's the what? What's the durability of the All transfer? Right. So we're going to go back to the beginning of our conversation. If you apply it right, time, temperature, and pressure, and you follow the manufacturer's recommendations, I have shirts I applied that still have the transfer on it, and the shirt's falling apart. So it, they are very, very durable it today. It's not a poor shirt. It was. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. This is another fun one. I like this one. Hold that side again. This one here is Premium Plus from Stalls, probably one of my favorite materials. This here, you try to silk screen something like this and get that stretch. Mm. It's not going to be really great, but great product, super easy to cut, easy to weed. Can you buy those transfers, not just make them yourself on oh, a cutter? Absolutely. So if, if anybody's not familiar with stalls, when it comes to CAD cut product and getting custom transfers, they're the king. Nobody is going to do it faster and better, have the breadth of different materials available than they do. And they're probably one of the only ones that do custom CAD cut pieces that you can order in quantity. I'm going to have to get their name up here. Right. <laughs> All right, so this one here is a, so going back to tactile, this is a puff material. So again, us screen printers, we love doing puff, right? <laughs> it's so much fun. This is a CAD cut product from Specialty Materials down on the other side over there that puffs up. So this actually brought back like, ugh, I got all. This was unheard of, right? Like yes. 10 years ago for a transfer, because it would, if you transfer it, you're squishing it. Yes. Basically. Yep, so this one here is unique about this is when it applies heat and pressure, it starts to pucker. And that's what makes it uh, rise. It shrinks and, pu and puckers up. So when I was with Insta, another transfer company, we were doing this kind of stuff with a screen printed transfer. It wasn't easy. And it wasn't easy to apply. Um, yeah. And I just recently saw their latest version of it, and it actually works really good. And it puffs up really tall, and it can do it in multicolor. And I thought that was neat. All right. So now we're going to get into dimensional. Has anybody started working with these molded transfers? Okay, when we pass these around, this right here is probably the most popular trend in heat transfer is molded transfer. So you've got uh, metallic molded. Uh, this one here is a, a matte. You've got them beveled. You've got them with, with angles. They, they just look incredible, and you can get a lot of detail. Those are next. And we'll do that one at the end. Okay. Headwear. So heat transfer on headwear. There's two things we run into. A center seam. And how do we get the heat where it needs to be? Because this is a thick, thick piece. Again, the new 360 IQ that Stalls just came out with their hat press, that thing's incredible. It fixes all the problems on headwear, getting the heat where it needs to be. Also uh, keeps it from getting creased at yep. the top. Because uh, it's got yep. a silicone pad on it, yep. and it's the best piece of equipment we bought in a long yeah, time. Hands down. So this one here is another molded metallic transfer. I actually love this transfer because it looks like a barbecue uh, transfer. If you can't tell, I'm a barbecue guy. I, I like my barbecue. Um, but your, your metallic transfers are super, super popular right now, and they can be really cool and, and uh, fun like that, or they can be really subtle. 
right? This one here is one of my favorite territory manager samples I just did. And I'm like, oh, that actually came out really, really good. And there's a, there's a few different companies you can get these from. Stalls makes them, uh, Pen Emblem, World Emblem. They're your main ones in the industry. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to probably one of the hottest trends. We'll start with this one. Anybody doing the laser etched leather yet? This is the hottest trend in the market today. Whether it's sewn on or heat transferred on, that right there I see in extreme sports, I see it in motorsports, I see it everywhere. Outdoor recreation, that is one of the coolest things. Breweries, distilleries, I see that all over those. Who are making those? Like, uh, who are some of the companies making the uh, fake so leather or leather? With those there, you're going to be able to get those from Pen Emblem. You're going to be able to get them from Stalls. You can get them from... Supercolor does them now. Those are your main three, but then you, you've got companies all over the place that offer them, but they come out of Asia. Today, that's not a really good option because getting product shipped here right now kind of sucks. So yeah, I would stay away from that and try to get as much domestic production as you can because that way you'll actually get them. Um, so this is another one that Stalls just came out with, and this is their faux leather, and it's actually got multiple colors. So I thought that was really unique as well. Right. So back to vinyl, these, are, these two here are from specialty materials on the other side, and they're patterned vinyl, right? You can get these now in hundreds and hundreds of patterns. Camouflage, this one looks like it might be a zebra thing, and that's called their soft metallic. Favorite one I've seen yet, looks like outer space. I thought this one was really cool. I, I was thinking back of a bunch of old jobs I did where if I had that, so think about just if you had a name of a company, it was really techy or they just liked outer space, make just the name of the company, right? And put that in the background. They're going to dig it. Any idea on like what the cost is on like an application like that? Not the, not the applying it, but the material? Yeah, so like something like that, cost? that's probably, if you're cutting it yourself, that's maybe 40, 50 cents worth of material. And what if you buy it from someone? Uh, the hard part is finding where you get those done. So I do know there's a company up in the Dakotas uh, heat transfer warehouse. They do custom cut patterns. I know Stalls has some. I don't know how deep it is right what now. What would the price range be roughly? You're probably buck twenty five, buck thirty, and they're doing all the work for you. You're just opening it and, tra and transferring it down. And it all depends, honestly, on quantity. Quantity. The higher quantities, the better price you're going to get. Period. It's just economies of scale. Uh, forgot to show you this one, but this is an encapsulated glitter. We were talking about it earlier. So encapsulated, what this is, it, 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 you can't feel the glitter. It's almost old school, but I'm seeing this in the stores now. Wow. All right, we're down to the last few, I promise here. So back to those, those soccer numbers we talked about, the old 70 soccer numbers that were felt. So this is Flock. The amount of colors that Flock comes in today is amazing. I mean, back in the day, you had maybe three. You usually had black, white, red, maybe a navy. Now you've got just about everything you can do to do sports and or fashion. And they're super easy to cut. You can get a lot of detail. This one here is just, you know, simple. But look how simple that is. And when you get this around and you feel it, that's the tactile part that people are talking about today. And you can buy these made, right? You yeah, don't have you to can get those done. Yourself. That's mainly going to be a Stalls product pre-cut. All right. Okay, so now we're down to a few different things. Does anybody do print and cut? Yeah? Okay, so print and cut vinyl. This, when I started, <laughs> I was around when this thing came out. The first versions, oh my gosh, they were so thick. They were papery. They were hard to work with. And then they, we came out with one that was super stretchable. And I'm like, wow, it's amazing. They were so hard to cut, so hard to work with. Learning how to mask them, it was a nightmare. Today, that material has completely changed where it lays down flat as you're cutting it, easier to weed out. Learning how to cut into ink is important. So if you're learning how to do this, make sure you learn about bleed lines. But the cool thing is you can get a ton of color. You can get a ton of detail now. If it's too much detail, that's the limitation. If you wanted a splatter effect or really small, tiny little text, that's the hard part with print and cut is you can't get that. But what I do like... This one here, I just saw this today, is again, one of my favorite kind of things. Somebody's logo with just an image in the background, right? And it's not text, it's not anything. But if, you, if that was your logo and it was, say it was a Microsoft kind of thing or it was something really, really notable, and they put a background in that, that's something they'd be like, wow, that's really cool. And it gives them you know, something they're used to seeing. 
All right. Show so, and tell. Yeah, I think that's about it. This one did fall down. So this one here, this is a transfer that they came from Supacolor. So one thing I do like about what they do is their line is very simple, and they have a, a transfer for a standard wearable, a non-wearable, headwear, and a blocker for dye migration, soft shells, things like that. They all pretty much apply the same, and they have different um, settings. Like I was telling you earlier, the alternate application settings, they can go up to 300 degrees, degrees or they can go down to about 290 so when you get down that low, and, and, and I heard a couple other numbers thrown out by some manufacturers of transfers getting down as low as 250 to 240, that's amazing. When they start getting at that level, that fixes all of our problems of scorching apparel, dye migration, things like that. Because dye migration only happens when a product gets to a certain temperature, right, to make it gas off again. And the lower we get the temperatures, the better success we're going to have with thin material. So I, I applaud all those in here that are manufacturers of transfers because they've been working really hard to get the temperatures down. Um, I know us in the, in the apparel field, we're trying really hard to make more fabric that is heat tolerant, which isn't always easy because on the fashion side, they want soft and thin. Soft and thin don't make heat tolerant. <laughs> so we're working hard to make that um, something that's more viable. So uh, any questions out there about transfers? Stacking? Yeah, let's repeat that. All right, the question is about multiple colors of uh, uh, cut vinyl, and he's had an issue with uh, scorching of a color. And burning. Okay, so the big thing when you're, when you're doing stacking of vinyl, the most important thing to remember is start off with what are you applying, right? Which material you're using. One, can it be applied multiple times? Because some of them can't. When you're looking at, so one of the best ones that I've personally worked with is Caesar Easyweed. It, it's a PU material. You can place the first one down and tack it for two seconds and peel. Sounds okay? like a marijuana company. Well, maybe. maybe this is not, Caesar Easyweed. <laughs> Easyweed. But you tack it quick and peel. Because the first one is just to get it in place. And if you do it for the whole time, heat transfer vinyl shrinks. So if you're doing it too long and it shrinks and you go to lay down the next one, now your numbers are off, right? So do the first one, tack easy. Do the second one, tack easy. If, if you have a third, that's when you do it for the full time. So just a quick tack to get it to go. Now the big thing with this is you can only do that with a hot peel material. If you're a cold peel material, you actually have to get it the whole time, all the way down and peel it, and you're gonna run the risk of shrink that way. So just be careful what material you're choosing That'll peel really, really easy. And again, for me, the Caesar Easyweed is probably the easiest one I've ever worked with. Other questions about transfers? All right, hearing none, uh, we'll be around. Um, afterwards, we have a great talk coming up here, Michelle Moxley. And uh, Jason will be back when we talk about some... Uh, uh, what was later? Uh, we're talking about um, uh, on-demand... Ah. Uh, and mass production and um he's at the samar booth if you want to ask him questions he's a pretty approachable guy um how about a hand for jason murphy thanks everybody and I want to thank the sponsors haynes her solutions and impressions check out inkitchen.com like us on social media check out our podcast low bleed thanks definitely for coming. check these guys out though and i got i like throwing this out for everybody People don't realize that this guy right here and his crew are responsible for all of us starting to talk to each other. It wasn't long ago that there was no talking in this industry. It was like, no, these are mine. Those are yours. These guys are the ones that really supported that and getting people to talk and share. The first time I saw Ink Kitchen and they were sharing all these things that they solved and these problems, I'm going, whoa, they're actually sharing. So thank you guys.